Hi everybody, uh, today just wanted to uh, go through a little bit of wire sizing um, based on some environmental conditions, right? Uh, we've looked at uh, sizing uh, copper and aluminum conductors in the past, um, but we are also going to have to take into account sometimes that environmental factors are going to come into play, right? If I have a higher ambient temperature or if I have more conductors, these things are creating heat and we know that's a bad thing for our wire, right? Not only uh, does increased heat give us an increased resistance in our conductor, therefore increased volt drop, uh, it's hard on the insulation and and um, overall the system um, will break down sooner because of it, right? So this is our situation that we have here, right? I have a 43 amp load uh, that is being fed in a conduit. Uh, there's five conductors total inside here. We have RW75 conductors that we're looking at, as well as these conductors are going to be exposed to a temperature of 43 degrees Celsius. So how does that all come into play and how can we figure out um, what size wire do we actually need to run from point A to point B to get everything done the way that it needs to, to be done and as well safely and, and have everything work over the long term, right? So when we look at uh, our tables from rule 4004 uh, that tells us how to size conductors and, and what we need to do, tables 1 and 2 gives us the allowable ampacities for copper conductors, tables 3 and 4 for aluminum conductors. Okay, so RW75, we didn't state it, uh, we default to copper conductors. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is if we're going to use this system here, gives us a little bit of a visualization of what we're trying to do, um, the th where we're going to and where we need to look for everything is up here, right? Um, this is the longest part of this drawing. It's also going to be the longest part of any circuit that you have. So you can always, always think that the wire is the longest part, the wire is on top, um, that's what we're actually trying to look for, right? How do we get there? Well, this time we have a load, right? So in order to figure out what size wire we need, we need to figure out what is, how does that relate to the load, right? So here's where we always start out with our load. From our load, we need to figure out what is the required ampacity of the wire that we're going to run from point A to point B. Okay, so in order to do that, we know we have a 43 amp load, so we can start there. So this 43 amp load, um, because of the conditions that are there, I need to figure out these things that we call derating factors. That's where we put the derating factors from table 5A and 5C in. Okay, so table 5A, we're looking for an ambient temperature. Right, as you go through table 5A and you see all the different temperatures in there, you also notice that there's columns. Right, we have a 60 degree, a 75, a 90 degree, etc. column. So the 75 degree column uh, is what we're going to be using. The reason for that is we have a 75 degree termination uh, temperature at our equipment. Uh, we also have RW75 wire, which is rated, the insulation is rated for 75 degrees. Right, so this is where we get into this thing we talked about, lowest termination temperature. Whatever the lowest is in my circuit, which is uh, 75 degrees, everything's rated for 75 degrees, that's what we go with. That's the column that we're looking for. Okay, so in uh, table 5A, when I look at the 75 degree column, uh, the uh, temperature is 43, but we actually have to go up to 45. We go to the next one up. So when we look in there, 75 degree column at 45 degrees Celsius gives me a D rating factor of 0 0.82. Okay. So the next one that we'll look at then is table 5C. So we have five conductors in here. In table 5C, that range of conductors, so five conductors, that range that it falls into gives me a D rating factor of 0 0.8. Right? So what do these numbers mean? 0 0.8, 2, 0.8, that's telling me what percentage of current they can handle based on the uh, heat that's in there, right? So 82% and 80%. In order to figure out an overall D rating factor for this entire system, I multiply these two numbers together to get an overall number, right? My overall correction factor then, when I multiply those two numbers together, becomes 0.656. Okay, this is the number that we're going to use to figure out everything else as we go through uh, this, this picture right here to figure out what, uh, what kind of current we have and then what kind of wire that we need, right? So in order to figure out what size wire I need, I would divide by this correction factor of 0.656. When I do that, I get a number of 65.5 amps, right? That's the required ampacity for this particular load. Okay, so now I can just take this over to my tables to actually pick a wire, right? We're copper conductors. We're going to go over to table two 
And again, we're looking in the 75 degree column. That's our lowest termination temperature. When I go in the 75 degree column and look for a number that's 65.5 amps or the next one up, I would find a number four that's good for 85 amps. Great. However, because of the environmental factors, we can actually handle 85.5 amps on this can we? So in order to find out excuse me, what this wire is actually good for, now I multiply to bring it back down. So 85 amps, I'm still using my same correction, correction factor of 0.656. That tells me that this number four now is actually only good for 54.4 amps. Is that enough? Right, I can come back to what my load was, 43 amps, 54.4 amps is bigger than that, so this wire is actually going to work. Number four, 85 amps, only good for 54.4 amps, but that covers me definitely for this 43 amp load. Very good. So the last step, of course, is trying to size a breaker based on um, what we have for loads here. So 54.4 amps in order to find a breaker. Now what is the breaker here to do? The breaker is here to protect the wire. What told me that that was the case? That comes from 14104. Right? That takes me to table 13 where I size my breakers. Gives me a range based on the uh, different ampacities that these wires fall under, right? So 54.4 amps, when I take that to table 13 and I look into that range, it tells me that if it falls within that range, I go to the size that it uh, corresponds to at the, uh, the higher end. So table 13 for a wire that's 54.4 amps tells me that I would use a 60 amp overcurrent. Great, so that uh, should take care of everything. Hopefully that's helpful, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.